Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Three years ago, Shanann made a decision that would cost her her life. At about this time three years ago, Shanann, apparently without her husband present, went to eat at Mount Fuji restaurant in Westminster, a stone's throw from Nicole Kessinger's neck of the woods in North Glen. During this outing, Shanann appeared to have a rocky marriage on her heart and in her mind. While having dinner at the large open plan restaurant with an unidentified friend, she opened up to Ola Yenka Hamza, a licensed attorney, about divorce and family law. My impression is her meeting with Hamza was a chance encounter. It wasn't an appointment and it wasn't some sort of Thrive related thing either. What we do know is when Shanann encountered this person, found out what he did for a living, it immediately got her curious and got her talking about revealing her situation and her circumstances. Now, I want to be quite clear that this episode isn't to blame Shanann. It isn't to um, make her responsible for what happened to her. It is It is almost the opposite is trying to imagine what we could have said to Shanann, you know, if Shanann could have also gone into her own future and into her own past, what could she have seen that could have helped her um, come to a different result? How could what happened to Shanann and her family, how could it have been avoided? And obviously, while Chris Watts is responsible for what happened, one wonders what Shanann could have done different that could have turned the tide, that could have made things turn out differently. So I just want to be clear that that is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to go back in time and look at what decision could have changed the outcome. And this is one of them. I, was, I think another one is obviously the pregnancy. If the pregnancy wasn't happening, I don't think the thing would have happened. You could also say if the affair didn't happen, Right, But this is certainly, I think, an area that hasn't been explored much by other creators. At the end of this episode, I'll be letting you guys know what I'll be talking about during Sunday's live at the usual time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So if you look at the map, you can see exactly where the Mount Fuji restaurant is. It's very close to North Glen. In fact, it is closer to Kessinger's home, I think, than it was to the Watts home in Saratoga Trail. So what we know for a fact was that at this point, at the end of March, in early April, the Watts couple felt that their marriage was in limbo. We know that for a fact. There was a second debt spiral looming. And it was also just prior to Shanann fatally falling pregnant for the third and final time. Um, and I think this probably happened three to four weeks after this meeting with Hamza. So this was kind of an opportunity during this meeting for Shanann to make a call, make a decision on whether she wanted to get deeper into a marriage or how she could get out of the marriage, right? So in hindsight, this encounter with Hamza during the early spring of 2018, so around about this time, probably on a weekend, this time um, in, in 2018, in early spring, prior to the pregnancy, it was an opportunity for Shanann to have considered at least and or chosen divorce as an option. This was a opportunity to consider divorce. Now, bear in mind, if you jump forward about 18 weeks, 18 or 19 weeks, the whole idea was of divorce was back on the, on the agenda. Chris Watts was telling her that he didn't feel that they were compatible. Of course, by then his affair with Kessinger was sort of white hot, but this was an opportunity for Shanann to sort of take control ahead of what was going to happen in the future. Now, according to Hamza, Shanann was wearing blue jeans and a faded orange blouse with the shoulders cut out, something she often wears. Shanann's companion, we don't know who it is, 
it is very curious i think that this companion has never come forward at least not to my knowledge it would be interesting to know what her companion said about that whole thing but apparently hamza described her companion as having distinct eyes and that she was wearing a black dress according to hamza the unidentified female was visiting from north carolina so it wasn't amanda thayer um, it wasn't nicole atkinson so who could it have been could it have been eddie maloney was was eddie maloney from north carolina so the rest of that encounter is captured very eloquently through the discovery narrative and we're going to go to that now which is on page 1493 and 1494. Hamza said he did not see Chris Watts at the restaurant, but he did recognize Chris Watts from reports and television. During the course of the conversation with Shanann and her friend, he told them he was an attorney. Hamza said that the fact that he was an attorney seemed to catch the attention of Shanann Watts. Hamza said he told Shanann and her friend that he practices nearly all areas of the law except family law because family law is very messy. So it's actually quite interesting that he um, basically highlighted the area that he wasn't involved in and this actually caught Shanann's attention. Hamza said that Shanann Watts began asking Hamza several questions about how the divorce laws work in Colorado. Bear in mind, she'd already been divorced before, um, but that was in North Carolina. So she was curious about divorce laws in Colorado. Hamza said that Shanann seemed to be interested in what could happen to children. She was specifically in interested in the custody side of things in a divorce proceeding. And bear in mind, children were, were a very big deal to Shanann. Shanann was led to believe that she couldn't have children and then when she did have children, I think it gave her a sense of completeness and wholeness as a person. So her children were very much part of her and part of her sense of self. Hamza said he told Shanann Watts about the Sparma Doctrine in Colorado, which specifically addresses the out-of-state relocation of children in a divorce occurring in Colorado. Hamza said he told Shanann that the presiding judge can't tell the custodial parent where to live and that was good news i guess for shanann it meant that she could possibly go back to north carolina and perhaps move in with her parents but the judge can decide on which parent gets custody of the children hamza continued and told shanann watts that the courts will make decisions which they think are in the best interest of the children now we go to discovery page 1494 Hamza said that Shanann seemed concerned about this doctrine because she had two children from a current marriage, two girls. So it was quite an in-depth conversation. Hamza said he asked Shanann if she was thinking about getting a divorce. This is quite a critical question. And Hamza said Shanann did not answer the question directly, but he did see her smile in response to the question. Hamza said he also noticed the unidentified friend smile as well. I think the answer to that is, was Shanann thinking about getting a divorce? Well, I think she was, it was in her mind. I'm not saying she was actually taking steps to get divorced, but I think the idea of divorce had certainly occurred to her, but in a way that it's like an unpleasant idea, an unpleasant impulse, if you will, almost like the idea where the, the idea of, of killing his family must have occurred to Chris Watts. It's, it starts off as a unsolicited thought, but then later becomes something that you invest more time into thinking in terms of self-preservation. So in the same way that I think Chris Watts did what he did out of an idea of self-preservation in the sense of that he wanted to um, perpetuate his relationship with Kessinger and he felt his marriage and everything else was a threat to that especially the pregnancy the idea of getting a divorce could also be self-preservation I think we all know what, what that's about so Shanann smiling I think was just a small um, sign that yes the idea had occurred to her right and it would make sense that it would because um 
there were there were things that weren't going well in their marriage they they weren't communicating that well and th- the idea of having the third child was meant to fix their marriage Hamza said after everyone at the table finished eating they all stood up and Shanann Watts approached him again and so kind of privately asked a few more questions about divorce Hamza said he thought it was about 10 o'clock in the evening and this is the key part Shanann Watts asked if it was possible for the courts in Colorado to give custody of the children in a divorce to the man in the case so what's possible here is that Shanann wasn't so much worried in the sense that she wanted to get divorced but what if he did what if her husband um, sued for divorce would she lose the children right that could have been what that sl- that smile was about that there was a little bit of a concern that her husband was losing interest in her losing interest in the marriage and let's face it he was and he certainly very soon from that point onwards very very soon he would be showing that so Hamza confirmed it was a possibility for the courts to grant the man custody of the children in Colorado Hamza said Shanann asked if divorce with children is a messy process and Hamza said he told Shanann that unless there is infidelity he would recommend doing everything possible to save the marriage rather than file for divorce now that was quite a key thing is saying unless there's infidelity he'd recommend doing everything possible to save the ma- the marriage now at obviously at that point I don't think Shanann had any reason to suspect that there was infidelity. If there is infidelity, then I think marriage is less messy in the sense that the um, culpability and, you know, the spouse that is at fault, it's quite clear to, you know, to see that side of it. On the other hand, I suppose you could also say that it can be messy if there's a an affair not in terms of the divorce itself, but in terms of the, um, what do you call it, the the backbiting and all the name calling and, and all of that nonsense going on around, you know, the third party, right? But I do think the same concern Shanann had that you can have a messy process if they get divorced the right way. Chris Watts had. He also was worried that divorce was going to be messy. And neither of them, I think, felt that they could afford it both emotionally or financially. Anyway, Hamza said he got the feeling that Shanann Watts wanted to ask more in-depth questions about divorce, but he thought she was a little hesitant because her friend was there. This does sound like Shanann because Shanann was very concerned about appearances. But it, it is quite tragic. It's quite sad that they didn't complete the conversation. And in any event, um, Hamza said he remembered Shanann talked about wanting to have another child. And so this was clearly on the cards and in her mind um, in sort of March, April. And we know that she, she ended up falling pregnant two to three weeks later. So they had talked about wanting to have another child, obviously as a remedy to the marriage. But she expressed concern for her health, and I, and I think that's all credit to her. She was right to be concerned about her health um, and also the health of the children. Look at what is going on with Cece. She said the last time she was pregnant, she had issues with her lupus flaring up. And so it really made sense to be careful about having a third child. She said... Watts may have mentioned, Shanann may have mentioned that her husband wanted a baby boy. Um, So that's quite interesting. We don't know that for a fact. Maybe Hamza was, um, you know, hearing things out of the news. And so as a result of that, um, it may not be accurate, but it does sound like it is accurate. It does sound that like Chris Watts probably would have wanted a baby boy. Otherwise, you know, he was sharing the household it was he was the only man or the only male in the house and he probably wanted to share things like sports and um his love of mechanics and mechanical things with a son perhaps 
Hamza said he did not remember seeing Shanann Watts consume any alcohol during his time in contact with her. Hamza said Shanann asked for Hamza's contact information and he provided her with his cell phone number. That's quite interesting is that it wasn't just hello, oh, that's interesting, you're an you're, um, attorney. Um, she actually asked for his contact information, possibly to follow up, and obviously she didn't follow up. Hamza said a few weeks ago he was watching a television program when he saw Shanann Watts' picture, and that is why he recognized her and contacted law enforcement. But the bottom line is that Shanann was talking in the restaurant to basically a stranger about how to get a divorce in Colorado. We know what happened in retrospect. Shanann took Hamza's advice in the sense that she did everything, she did do everything possible, I think, as far as she was concerned, to save her marriage. I think part of that was falling pregnant the third time. I think she did it more to accommodate her husband than what she wanted. And then I think at the end of that period, she also did everything possible in terms of writing him the letter, ordering the book, and trying to just stay positive and, and hold on, if anything, just in her heart and in her mind, despite what the evidence was showing. And it's unfortunate that that, that was the case. You can't fault Shanann for doing that, but it's unfortunate that she did do that. Shanann... So Shanann went ahead, had another baby, but somehow, as we know, this gesture, this strategy, this idea backfired. It was actually Chris Watts's idea, but it looks like it was something that Shanann considered and then eventually seemed to see the sense in it. Um, the five-week trip to North Carolina was possibly meant to boost the family finances, so possibly this is also what Shanann did to save her marriage, going on this trip to North Carolina to try and right the ship, the financial ship, and thus indirectly save their marriage. Shanann wasn't to know then, but this five-week window really opened the door to what's opportunistically having an affair. Um, if he was already in an affair, it was a chance for him to really get on the roller coaster every day and sort of make hay while the, while the sun was shining. And so by the end of that period, he was not only hopelessly in love, but caught up in an overwhelming desire to get out of his marriage, to stay in the relationship that he was now in, um, to, you know, he was in a sense addicted and he didn't want that to end. And, and somehow he felt he needed to put an end to the pregnancy. He needed to get out of his marriage and put an end to the pregnancy, but not necessarily in that order. I think he felt the clock was ticking and he had to end the pregnancy as soon as possible and then also get out of his marriage and that didn't need that didn't need to be done as quickly although he told his mistress that the time um, span of the divorce was already proceeding and so ultimately he ran out of time or he felt he ran out of time. Eddie Maloney said her husband thought Watts appeared less than thrilled when he saw Watts' reaction on Shanann's pregnancy reveal video. So I get the idea that they discussed having a third child. Chris Watts was sort of in two minds. And then by the time Shanann actually fell pregnant, Watts was already uncomfortable with the idea. So it's almost like he, he, he had wanted a, th a little boy but by the time that actually she actually fell pregnant, bear in mind it was almost three years since the last baby was born. Chris Watts was perhaps recently in a new situation that made him feel he had second thoughts. Perhaps it was also just a situation of stupidity where hypothetically you want another child, but then once you are actually confronted with that news, you're sort of shocked. It's like, well, there's no way out now. And what seemed to sort of kick against that idea throughout Shanann's pregnancy, it seems like he tried to wrestle with it. He was conflicted in the beginning, but as time went by, he really couldn't accept it. And so just a few weeks later, when Watts joined Shanann in North Carolina, Watts finally communicated how he really felt 
about the pregnancy and indirectly about the marriage. And, and that was communicated in this text from Shanann to Addy on August the 7th at 7.17 a.m., so quite early in the morning. She said that Chris told me last night he's scared to death about this third baby and he's happy with just Bella and Celeste and doesn't want another baby. And this was at around about 14 weeks and it was the day after he went to see his parents and it was the day that they flew back to uh, Colorado from North Carolina after their week, their very unhappy week there. And he responded, he's just scared. Everything will be fun once the baby comes. But Shanann said, Eddie, he has changed. I don't know who he is. And then she said, what do you mean? He hasn't touched me all week, kissed me, talked to me, except for when I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. And there's another incident where she says to Eddie that she doesn't feel safe with him because of his, what he said about the baby. And Shanann was so right about that. Shanann had a sense of being imperiled and it's just unfortunate that her intuition and her sense that she had at the restaurant and at this point after the about 14 weeks that she didn't act on her intuition that she didn't act on her gut feeling. In tomorrow's live I'm going to be talking about the conjecture that Nicole Kessinger has been writing to Chris Watts in prison under an, an assumed name. So we, we'll be talking about that as well as George Floyd and some of the recent events in other cases, including uh, Laurie Vallow. And I'll probably also be talking about John Bonet Ramsey. I'll also be putting up a video on John Fernie and some inconsistencies, I believe, in his statement. I'll be putting that up later today on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please do like, share, leave a comment. Have a wonderful Easter wherever you are if you celebrate Easter and I'll see you guys next time.